Today, India is going through a communication and IT revolution. This has only been possible because of the successful Indian Space Science Program. Which was envisioned by a path-breaking visionary scientist, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. Soon after India's independence in 1947, many leaders and visionaries from different fields emerged on the horizon. India was fortunate to have Dr. Sarabhai to take up the mantle and play a pioneering role in the field of science. Dr. Sarabhai realized that science and technology have to play an important role in India's rapid development. He said, we do not have time, we have to leapfrog. His vision was very broad and far-reaching. He considered all aspects of Indian society. He knew that with cooperation and support from all segments, development was bound to follow. The Department of Atomic Energy was established in the year 1947. After the sad demise of its chairman, Dr. Homi Bhabha, Dr. Sarabhai was given the responsibility of chairmanship. During his tenure as chairman, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai started working on space science. The Indian space program was ushered in just a few years after the country got its freedom from British rule. Dr. Sarabhai selected a team of a few young, bright and enthusiastic scientists and started the Physical Research Laboratory, PRL, in one room of MG Science College at Ahmedabad in the year 1947. Later, PRL became the mother of the Department of Space. India decided to take up the space program and a National Committee for Space Research was formed in 1962. In the natural course of events, Dr. Sarabhai headed the committee. Within one year, the committee decided to establish a base at Tumba to launch research rockets in order to study geomagnetism as well as natural phenomena in the atmosphere. November 21st, 1963, the first rocket named Nike Apache rushed towards its outer orbit from Tumba, marking the ceremonial commencement of the Indian space program. That day, was surely among the happiest in Dr. Sarabhai's life. It is not accidental that on the soil of India, the great space powers, the United States, the USSR and France, are collaborating with us at the equatorial range near Tumba. And even the United Nations sponsorship of this range is not merely a matter of form, but constitutes an umbrella under which, regardless of political differences, Nations can collaborate in the peaceful uses of outer space. Dr. Sarabhai was basically optimistic about the efficacy of science. His attitude found expression in his idea of taking India along the path of progress with the help of advanced science and technology. The aerial photography experiment of coconut tree disease in Kerala was enough to prove the capability of remote sensing technology and make it an intrinsic part of the Indian space science program. During the years 1969 to 1971, the formation of the Indian Space Research Organization took place. At the same time, the new SSTC at Trivandrum and the SDSC Shar Center became operational. This forms the foundation of today's fully operational space port of India, SDSC Shar. In my uh, opinion, the aspect of space research, which I would like to stress most, is in relation to the national capability, the self-confidence that this will generate. And if I 
uh, where to give my own evaluation of this, I think the benefits of this far outweigh uh, all the rest that we have been talking about. Dr. Sarabhai founded the first Indian satellite communication earth station at Ahmedabad in 1967. Yes, we set this up because uh, about five years ago we realized that uh, this was going to be one of the most important uh, peaceful applications of outer space mm -hmm. and would have a profound influence uh, on uh, future development of communications and mass communications in this country. Communication and mass communication, That's that right. means telephone and television. Yes, very much so. Particularly in a country like India where the large mass of people who have to be motivated are illiterate. It is very important to, I think, have the information uh, input um, as an integral part of the developmental process. Mm -hmm. And I think a powerful technique like an audiovisual presentation through television uh, can be one of the most important uh, motivations, uh, a catalyst mm -hmm. uh, for action. The Indian Space Program, born as a result of Dr. Sarabhai's vision, took shape in the early years of the space age. It took rapid strides forward under his able leadership and continued with unabated enthusiasm even after his demise. Dr. Sarabhai was responsible for providing the essential infrastructure for the Indian space program in the early years of its development, making India one of the prestigious space conquering countries of the world. It was because he provided such a strong base that his successors could build the magnificent edifice that is today's Indian space program. Every member here is a part of the combined extended family. It is fortunate very fortunate that a man like Satish Dhawan, who in many ways was like this one, because for him it was not ego, it was not self, it was a vision of technology for national development. He proposed that we use this new technology of mass communications for broadly educational and developmental purposes for specially directed areas of our country. The founder of the Indian Space Research Organization, Professor Vikram Sarabhai, his focus is how space program can be used for societal development, Indian society development, particularly since uh, we have a large number of rural areas. Maximum people of people live in the rural area. Uh, how this, uh, this space program make an impact uh, in the lives of our rural people, of nearly 70 percent of the people live in the rural area. That was the focus. Where we use the American satellite, ATS-6 satellite for a period of one year to provide meaningful educational programs to villages, 2400 villages in six clusters. In fact, many of the places didn't have, didn't have TV. Even Karnataka, the first TV station was not Bangalore, it was Gulbarga because it was one of our side programs. And this was a great hit. And when Mrs. Gandhi saw some of these programs, she was absolutely wonderstruck. Notwithstanding, at the end of the one year, when everybody knew that it was going to be stopped, A, it had established the capability of satellites as, a, as an instrument of change. Though the Indian space program started in the 1960s by launching sounding rockets, the scientists were interested in developing massive rockets that could place artificial satellites in orbit. As a result, the designing of the first satellite launch vehicle started under the guidance of Dr. Sarabhai, and he was successful in launching the design of the launch vehicle. 
very important concept that he developed in the country that the scientific departments shall not work in silos. They work along with the user community in the country and that is really the strength of today's ISRO. So that he, he laid the foundation for it and ultimately he also realized this is also a strategic area. Once India develops the capability for satellites and he starts using it for its socio-economic development, there will be also the need for launching it. And we should have an autonomous access to the space irrespective of the geopolitical vicissitudes of the world. So he said we need to develop our own launch vehicles and that's the SLV-3 which he promoted at that particular point of view. Today we are, you know, for some of the best launch vehicles in the world we have and we are self-reliant in the context of removing, putting our own communication satellites or even middle level communication satellites and also our remote sensing satellites. So these are all the product of a vision where he knew that the space can play a crucial role uh, provided we know how to use it and how to create an institutional mechanism in the country to use the space as a tool, innovative tool for development. India launched its Rohini spacecraft successfully with its own launch vehicle SLV-3 on July 18, 1980 and joined the elite club of nations with satellite launching capabilities. On May 20th, 1992, the first augmented satellite launch vehicle carried the 106 kg satellite Thros C and placed it in the near Earth orbit. The proven workhorse of ISRO is a 44 meter high rocket, the PSLV. PSLV has a glorious history of 18 consecutive successful flights. The first flight of the geostationary satellite launch vehicle took off successfully on April 18, 2001. Since then, it has launched satellites, GSAT-1 satellite, GSAT-2, EduSat, and finally, INSAT-4CR. Between 1975 and 2011, a total of 55 Indian satellites were orbited by ISRO. You know, India has half a million villages. And if we want to really uh, create the counter forces to urbanization, which everybody agrees has its own great problems. If we want to see that some of our best people continue and can men have a meaningful, qualitatively rich experience, even if they are in villages, then we can use these new techniques. Mm -hmm. to bridge that uh, information gap and that contact with the wider sphere in the world. Mm -hmm. A successful project in the field of rural development was carried out in the Kedar district of Gujarat between the years 1979 to 1990. It was repeated during the period 1996 to 2002 in the Chabua district of Madhya Pradesh. Both these communication projects made a great positive impact on the rural population. Most unique applications are in the areas of telemedicine and uh, teleeducation. The you know that uh, number of our people in remote areas and villages they are illiterate. How the classrooms can be taken to the villages has been demonstrated through the teleeducation program, and this is uh, world's unique program. No other country has got such a program. Even uh, recently when we discussed with uh, NASA, the NASA chief himself wanted